actually spoke about one of our topics in discussion um, in studio uh, this morning, which is public participation. He um, actually um, criticized the public for failing to show up when invited to such forums. Um, he spoke about um, a host of other issues, including garbage collection and corruption. Um, we are crossing over to Nyeri County once again as we continue to listen in uh, to proceedings there. Let's listen in. Evolution envisaged by the Constitution of Kenya 2010 was new to us and new to the region. Chapter 11 of the Constitution transferred financial, political, and administrative responsibilities to the county governments. With such immense changes supposed to occur in a short period of around three years, tension and mistrust were expected. Shifting from a highly centralized system to a devolved system was definitely going to be un un uncomfortable. Our constitution and in the elaborate legal framework to support the transition signaled that it was not business as issue. There were new entrants to the governance space. And with the transformation, successes and challenges have been experienced in equal measure. Over the last four years, the strides we have witnessed in sectors like health, agriculture, roads, early childhood education and provisions of water services are true manifestation of the objects of devolution contemplated in Article 174 of the Constitution. More and more citizens are participating in decision making. Local economies are growing faster than even before and uplifting millions of livelihoods across the county. Basic services are now closer to the people and resources are finally trickling down to the villages. We are not yet there. We are not there yet, but with a strong and enabling environment, county governments have the capacity to soar Kenya to extraordinary heights. What this means is that both levels of government must genuinely work together for a common cause, the success of devolution. In the first phase, there was vibrant engagement with constitutional commissions and independent offices. We at the Council had constant discussions with the Commission of Revenue Allocation on matters revenue distribution between the national government and the county government, and among us the 47 county government. I must applaud the CRA for this courage to continuously agitate for adequate funding for the functions of county governments. We have worked well together, and this positive dialogue needs to continue. As you are aware, one of the biggest handles for the, to the implementation of devolution is underfunding. County governments have received a meager budget, yet they perform most of the service-based functions. For devolution to work best for Kenyans, adequate resources must be allocated for all the county functions. The constitution provides that the equitable share of county governments shall be not less than 15% of all revenue collected by the national government. This threshold must go higher if counties are to provide quality and affordable services. And it is not just an, on allocation. Disbursements must be made on time. Through the Public Financial Management Act, though the P Financial Management Act clearly stipulates that monies for the expenditure of the following month must not be sent to county government later than the 15th day from the commencement of the month, often, Counties have experienced delayed disbursements from the National Treasury, and this, and this has regrettably come with fatal consequences. Development projects have sometimes stalled. Salary payments have been, late, been made late to the, to the disadvantage of county officers. Basic services have near halted due to lack of resources. And delays in payment of suppliers, as on many occasions, left counties in a precarious position. As we enter into the next phase of devolution, the National Treasury must comply with the law and ensure that funds are disbursed to counties on time. Still on matters finance, the Council of Governors continues to emphasize on the urgent need to put in place a policy and legal framework to guide funds flow for conditional grants and donor funds. The National and County Government Coordination Summit had commissioned a task force to develop a formula for funds flow. A draft document on the administration and reporting of conditional grants was generated and finalized, but this is not yet, is yet to be adopted. A proper, proper framework will mitigate the conflicts that have arisen between the two levels of government. 
where donor and development partner funds related to county functions are allocated to the national government ministries and agencies for utilization. It is of utmost urgency that the current guidelines be given legal force. Ladies and gentlemen, moving forward, there are other critical policy issues that must be addressed to guarantee seamless implementation of devolution. Functional analysis and costing thereto must be finalized. Only when the true costs are apprehended to each devolved function will the National Treasury and Parliament be properly guided in allocation of the equitable share to county governments. The Intergovernmental Relations Technical Committee must also proceed with haste to determine and cost res residual functions so that we have counties are performing residual functions on behalf of the national government, funds follow those functions. On human resource management, the last four years have not been rosy. Several counties have inherited bloated workforces. At the council, our desire is that the, the capacity assessment and rationalization of the public service will be successfully implemented. This exercise will assist counties to rid themselves of redundant and unskilled workers, and every county has, can establish a lean, cost-effective, and efficient public service. It will be an opportune time for counties to evaluate their human resources needs and recruit we in line with those needs. The delivery of quality, affordable, and accessible services to Kenyans is dependent on our willingness to put in place personnel who are competent, skilled, and committed. As we streamline the public service, we must also work closely with the Salaries and Remuneration Commission to streamline remuneration and benefits for all public officers. In the last four years, a lot of funds have gone to recurrent expenditure, a phenomenon that continues to adversely compromise development budgets. We must stop this immediately. Salaries, allowances, and extravagant benefits will not grow our economy. Investments will. More money needs to go into agriculture, healthcare, infrastructure, provision of water, creation of jobs, and education. This is what is important. The SRC must step up its efforts to bring down recurrent expenditure, and all of us at both levels of government must accept the hard truth and comply. Our constitution expects that public money will be used in a prudent and responsible way so that more resources find their way into service delivery. On structures, structures, state agencies and corporations and regional development authorities must be restructured to align to the devolved system of government to avoid overlapping and duplication of roles. A huge share of the national budget continues to be allocated to these institutions to the disadvantage of county governments. It is not only wasteful to fund entities that are essential, essentially performing county functions, it is also a blunted violation of the constitutional values and principles of good governance and accountability. On public participation and civic education, counties have made commendable progress in entrenching programs and developing legislation to ensure that their constituents are at the center of decision making. For this regime though, we must now seek to ensure that all counties are compliant with the county government acts by establishing their civic education units to implement civic education programs and active participation platforms. One of the tenets of the Constitution 2010 is participation of the people. And similarly, one of the hallowed objects of devolution is to give power of self-governance to the people and enhance their participation in decision-making affecting them. Through active engagement with citizens, both levels of government will be able to tailor their budgets and development plans to the needs of the people. In order to bolster public participation efforts, resources must be set aside to support operations of the decentralized structures below the county level, that is, sub-counties, wards, villages, urban areas, and cities. These structures are important in the overall design of devolution as they promote inclusiveness of minorities and marginalized groups, equity and provision of proximate and accessible services. Ladies and gentlemen, at the Council, 
our collaborations with the constitutional commissions will continue. As we speak, and in, recog in recognizing the role of county governments in the realization of human rights in Kenya, the council signed a memorandum of understanding with the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights in order to mainstream human rights human rights based approaches in county governance in fulfillment of this mou the council is part of the technical team convened by the kenya national commission of human rights that is developing the economic and social rights training curriculum and manual as i conclude allow me to mention something about our experiences in labor relations in the last term we witnessed two major strikes one of the doctors and one of the nurses. This almost crippled the public health system in the country. Kenya National Commission of Human Rights was at some point during the negotiations of the doctor strike part of the mediation team. Another commission that featured prominently in the industrial action was the SRC. Since it is a constitutionally con it is a body constitutionally mandated to provide guidance on remuneration and benefits. The council and the county public service boards have had the work have had to work closely with SRC in finalization of recognition agreements and collective bargaining agreements. We have learned that in such circumstances, county governments cannot work in isolation. They are better off consulting and liaising with the commissions for expedient outcomes. I cannot also fail to talk about accountability. If there is one thing that has tainted the many achievements that counties have made, it is corruption. A section of Kenyans have, have pessimistic faith in devolution due to the reported cases of financial mismanagement and embezzlement in the counties. Now that most of the counties have gazetted their leadership and integrity codes, it is time to walk the talk. At both levels of government, we must do everything possible to ensure that graft is eliminated in governance. The region is moving, the continent is moving, the world is moving, and we must be part of this change. We cannot be left behind because of primordial tendencies that compromise development in favor of personal interests. Time to eat must come to an end, and we must be ready for the consequences of corruption. <laughs> Kenya is a nation with immense potential. And this potential will only be realized when every cent is put to the use it was intended for. The control of budget and the office of the Auditor General must impose strict sanctions on institutions that fail to utilize public funds transparently and appropriately. Ladies and gentlemen, at both levels of government, as, as both levels of government seek to address the challenges implemented challenges implementing the devolved system of government governance we must do this together in this second phase let us build better relationships between the national government parliament constitutional commissions independent offices and county government on policy and legislative issues we must consult and dialogue and effectively utilize the existing intergovernmental mechanisms for settling disputes in the end all our efforts are geared towards one goal, that the devolved system of governance is fully and completely successfully implemented. Both lev levels of government must accord devolution the goodwill and support it deserves. As I conclude, I affirm that devolution is indeed working. We have no choice but to support its implementation. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Chairman. We appreciate it.